Fast Tackle is a very interesting role in EVE Online, though often taken for granted due to low skill requirements to perform it. As a result, many newer players are shown the ways of Fast Tackle as an entry-level position in fleets. This, with the addition of a very low potential replacement cost, may lead you to incorrectly assume that it's an unimportant or lowly role, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Connecting. At its core, the role of Fast Tackle is to be very maneuverable, lock very quickly, and to warp disrupt or warp scramble the enemy, also referred to as getting points, though there is normally very little to no emphasis on dealing damage. The purpose of this is to grab ships before they warp away, whereas your friends might not be able to lock them fast enough or be quick enough to run them down. While this role is inherently a fleet-based position, it has a lot of aspects that will reflect on how you would want to fly in solo or small gang flights. Without a tackle ship in most fleets, the enemy would simply warp away when your fleet goes in for the kill. So when would you fly fast tackle? Tackle is a great option for anyone on a budget or for someone who doesn't have the ability to use the requested ship fittings. However, this is by no means a requirement. Fast tackle should be flown in a situation where the fleet doesn't already have tackle capabilities provided by specialty ships. This is a fairly broad statement, I know. However, your best judgment and approval from the fleet commander about your ship choice is the best way to know. More often than not, having two to five fast tackle ships in fleet, depending on fleet size, would be a reasonable number to have. Flying fast tackle can be as simple as selecting to orbit someone, micro warp driving towards them, and getting point. It can get very complicated and technical as well by manually flying to mitigate damage and also pulling off maneuvers to better control the range of the engagement. We will touch more on some flight tactics and fleet terminologies in a bit. Knowing your modules and how they work is a pivotal part of the role, and what modules you fit can drastically change the nature of how your fast tackle ship is flown. Having a warp scrambler, also known as a scram or a short point, is great because they can shut off micro warp and micro jump drives, however their short range can be extremely limiting. Scrams also have a warp disruption strength of 2, which is important for catching ships that may have a warp core stabilizer installed. Warp disruptors, also called long points, have significantly longer range, but will not be able to shut off the micro warp and micro jump drives. Another module that is important, yet optional, is a stasis webifier, also called a web. These are modules that will physically slow down the enemy ship. These have a standard speed reduction of 50-60% to 60 to the enemy ship and greatly aid in applying damage to the enemy ship, as well as prevent them from being able to escape your point range. It is fairly common to not fit any weapons to better specialize your ship for its role. When fitting a ship for use as fast tackle, some perform better than others. The first group of ships are Tech 1 frigates, which are the Executioner for Amar, Condor for Kaldari, Atron for Galente, and Slasher for Mimitar. These ships get a flat rate roll bonus that reduces the capacitor usage of propulsion jamming modules, as in warp disruptors and webifiers. These are the ships that would be considered disposable due to their low cost, around half a million ISK for a fully fitted, ready to fly ship. The low skill requirements make these ships plentiful in most places, so resupplying shouldn't be an issue. The Tech 2 variants of these ships are the Interceptors. They have the same hull model as the previous ships, but with significantly more specialization. There are two Interceptors for each race. There will be one that benefits from a 5% per level bonus to Disruptor and Scram range, and as well as immunity to bubbles. The other variant is more focused on the combat capable side of the tackle role. These ships will favor dealing damage and tanking over tackle specialization. The bubble immune versions tend to be more popular because of their increased point range bonus and the fact that they don't deal with the hassle of bubbles. Respectively to their races, the bubble immune ships are the Malediction, Crow, Ares, and Stiletto. The combat focused variants are the Crusader, Raptor, Tyrannus, and Claw. Both variants benefit from a skill based bonus to the reduction of signature bloom while using a micro warp drive. This will help reduce incoming damage to your ship while you are using a micro warp drive. There are also some more specialized ships that are worth mentioning, though they are significantly more of a niche option than the previous ships. These would be the Carries and the Hyena, and they are classified as electronic attack ships. 
The carries benefits from a 15% bonus to propulsion jamming range per skill level, as well as a capacitor usage reduction and sensor dampening bonus. The Hyena earns itself a whopping 40% bonus to web range per skill level, and it also has a signature reduction and target painter strength bonus. These ships are both extremely effective at what they do, however, their fitting space leaves some to be desired. Now, let's talk about some quick terminologies that would be extremely helpful going into your first fleet engagement. The most common one you will likely hear is, get points. This is just a way of saying to catch the enemy with a disruptor before they get away. A variation of this is to spread points. This refers to having multiple people get points on as many different enemies as possible, normally in a situation where the enemy fleet is trying to escape. Another commonly used term, though not specific to the fast tackle role, is to crash gate, or reapproach the gate. This is normally prefaced by the fleet commander telling you to jump through the gate you are at or going to. When given this command, you should interpret the situation as best you can for how you should respond, but you will normally use your micro warp drive to get back to the gate as soon as you can without engaging the enemy. If you engage the enemy, you cannot jump through the gate and you may needlessly lose your ship. Something that may be requested of you to do for the fleet is to scout, or plus one, the fleet. This means that the FC wants you to stay one jump ahead of the fleet, hence the plus one terminology, hinting that you should stay one jump ahead of the fleet but this number can change. You are to report on any enemies you find in the system before the fleet gets there. This role requires concise, accurate, yet quick information to be given to the FC. You will rarely engage an enemy when you are doing this, so have restraint and know what your priority is. Sometimes you need to get somewhere ASAP. If this is the case, the FC may tell you to burn or make best speed to a destination. Basically, just get to the destination as fast as you can. While flying a fast tackle can be as simple as lock up and point, sometimes you gotta get smart about how you do it. Learning to manually fly your ship can be a literal lifesaver. One effective tactic is called spiraling, where you are manually orbiting your enemy so you are a hard target to hit, all while closing distance. This is extremely effective against larger ships that can have a hard time tracking a fast moving small ship. Another very effective tactic is called slingshotting, where you rely on your enemy's lack of awareness to get them in range when they are faster than you. This is achieved by getting them to chase you down at high speeds, and right as they start to get close, you hit the brakes and you pull a 180. This will result in you heading straight at them, and their reaction time normally isn't good enough to compensate for the unexpected split second maneuver. This is most effective when you are fitted with a scram and web, so once you get in range, you can shut off their micro warp drive and slow their ship way down. This simple move can completely change the flow of an engagement and is easy to practice. A more niche tactic you can try is deceiving the enemy players by allowing them to believe that you are much slower than you actually are. To do this, manually set your speed well below your actual max speed while micro warp driving towards the enemy. This tactic does require the foresight to know what your speed would be with an afterburner, so you can fool the enemy into believing you are fit with an afterburner. This can pay off by tricking the enemy into thinking that they are at a much safer distance from you than they actually are allowing you to make the mad dash at full speed once you start to close range. You can expect to use this tactic when in small gangs more than a full-fledged fleet engagement though. Something to keep in mind while you are training yourself in the role of fast tackle is that it's not really a career path when it comes to PvP. It's extremely good to practice it as it will start you on a very good path of understanding game mechanics, however it's a role that is commonly filled. I don't want you to misinterpret this as a statement against doing fast tackle but it's not my personal recommendation that you should focus your skills and time solely on this role. With that said, knowing and practicing what was talked about in this video will greatly improve your abilities as a player and should help you become proficient in many more advanced forms of PvP. I greatly value all the input I have received from the last video, and I would like to return the favor by letting you all know what will likely be the next topic covered at the end of each video. As of the making of this, a fitting theory guide will likely be the next one to come out, however, I would like to know what you want to see first. An introductory guide on armor fitting theory, or an introductory guide on shield fitting theory. Let me know in the comments, or give me suggestions by joining my in-game channel, Eep on Eve, all one word. If you found this video helpful, or heaven forbid, you actually enjoyed it, don't be afraid to subscribe, like, and share, and tell anybody that you think might benefit from it as well. Don't forget, 
hitting that notification bell will give you updates when I come out with another video. So that might be in your interest. I'll see you guys at the next one.